So this is the new Motif XF right here that I'm going to play. I am Blake Angelos. I am a product specialist from Yamaha Corporation America. Um, so I guess the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play a song. Um, I just uh, realized that the version I have in here is a lot slower than the one I'm about to play. But this is a Joe Henderson saxophonist, very famous jazz saxophonist named Joe Henderson. He wrote this cool little tune called Isotope. So I'm going to go ahead and play it um, with the... Uh, um, electric piano, guitar solo, bass solo I think is in it. We'll see what happens here. So. Thank you very much. So, um, this that entire look composition once again uh, was done entirely on the XF here. Um, so, what did you hear? Uh, well, first of all, the XS um, had a lot of great electric pianos. The XF continues that. So. I love this uh, hard vintage, very nicely uh, kind of amped. sound. Uh, what was that again? <laughs> it's a funny thing. <laughs> so, um, so that's a uh, Fender Road sound. There's a new um, bass that we included in the new wave ROM, which I'll talk a little bit about, which is this round wound um, there. Um, Fender bass. So the thing that's cool about this guy is that I have harmonics on my assignable function, which you heard in and then all these behaviors. But the actual sound of this guy is brand new. Something we just add. Along with the jazz guitar. That I 
ran through a little tube amp simulator. You can hear when I play some of those licks, you hear the slide of the string, but it kind of occasionally shows up. this guy I have so a signable function is the actual slide which is the sound of the guy actually doing it as opposed to me going which kind of sounds like it but that and then octaves I'll come back to that sound in a second um, some horn stuff there's a new jazz kit in here new symbols that we sound on. So that's the sounds, that's everything that I kind of put together in this uh, first tune here. So um, looks like that's not going to work, so I'll just fly blind here. Um, so from the beginning of the Motif Workstation series that we released, I guess the first one was 2000. One? 2001 was the Motif. Motif ES came out, I believe, in 2003, followed by the Motif XS, which was 2000 which was 2007, um, that just came back on just automatically or you just mess with it, okay. Um, and now the Motif XF. So the Motif was built on these principles when we first started out. First one is great sounds. That's a very important thing to Yamaha and player sounds, sounds that are very expressive, um, very strong, especially in the acoustic instrument category. It's a nice thing to work for a company like Yamaha because we make basically all of the acoustic instruments that you can possibly think up. Acoustic pianos, acoustic guitars, drums, and so on. So it really sings in that category. It also has a great synth engine, really great um, fully resonant filters, a lot of modeled effects, um, especially vintage effects that are very strong in this guy, um, which is called VCM, virtual circuit modulation. So we have some very cool uh, modeled effects that do flangers, phasers, wah-wah, and stuff like that. Um, drum kits, you know, very strong on drum kits. So we always have continued this tradition. Every time when we release the motif, the next version usually does something like doubles the amount of memory that was um, available. So from the original motif, which is about 70 megs, seems so long ago, so small too, we moved up to something like 160 or something megs, I can't exactly remember, to the motif excess, which was 355 megabytes. Um, now we've doubled that again, so we now have 740 megabytes, which translates to um, a lot of really great killer stereo samples, very playable. Um, the new sounds that we added were based on a lot of uh, the feedback we got from customers on Motivator.com. So, great sounds. That's the first thing. So I'll play some of the sounds that are in here. Um, first of all, let me start out with... Um so that's the uh, full concert grand piano that um so this was in the motif excess um and if if does anybody have an excess any owners of the excess something that you that if you decide that you're gonna i'm gonna get one of these and you take it home and you compare it to your excess you'll kind of notice that this kind of sounds just seems to sound a little different a little fatter it's because as with everything, like uh, this guy here, this is a good example. I had an iPhone uh, 3G S, and of course I got the iPhone 4 when it came out. It seems like every time they come out, they do something different. Like uh, with, the, with this guy, they added the new i4 chip that's in the iPad. So it's a little faster, a little nicer screen. That's the same thing, I think, with the XF. The XF has a different, uh, a different processor in it. It's a little faster. It feels faster. It still is the same basic layout as the XS, so it's not going to be something really different. But things move a little bit quicker. Um, the D to A converters are different on here. They sound a little nicer. So there's some definite differences in just this sound here. You know, it's a little, tiny difference, but it's, it's there. So full concert grand, big nine foot concert grand, real big in the low end, real, real big in the high end. But for somebody like me, I kind of prefer a little darker piano because I like my mixes dark, as they say. So 
So I'll play the kind of the same little riff here. That's the nine foot. As opposed to totally different piano. And which one is better? You know, that's, that's your decision. But the fact that we have two really great pianos that are entirely different is really a great thing. We also have, and this is all just kind of sample this one. This one here is coming off of my flashboard that I have installed. I'll talk about that a little bit more. But this is the S700 for XS that we released um, because a lot of people wanted the S90 ES piano, which was a really big piano, especially in, uh, in Los Angeles and in um, Nashville recording studios. In fact, Philippe Sace. He's a keyboard player, um, played with everybody, Stones, I guess, lots of stuff. Anyway, uh, David Bowie, right? I think Philippe did that. He's a really great jazz pianist, and uh, he went into a recording studio, and uh, they wanted him to use a really nice software plug-in, but they, sometimes they just don't feel right, so he brought in his S90 ES, and he's used that a lot on a lot of stuff. So a lot of people really wanted this sound back. So this one's different than, and different than, so three very entirely different pianos, the third one being available when you purchase the flashboard, which gives you an extra 500 megabytes or one gigabyte. I'll talk about that later. So um, what else do we add in here that's new? New stuff. Um, we've already had a lot of great, you know, electric pianos you heard. We got, you know, stuff with the VCM effects. So, VCM effects. This is nice. I never get cool stuff like this. So, take a look at this. If I hit edit, effect, it is insertion B. Look at that guy. So, virtual circuit modeling. Stuff that we've had in the, in the XS in the past. Sounds even better coming out of this guy here. Um, this was actually a uh, technology that was developed by a very brilliant engineer at Yamaha who goes through and looks at the schematics. The actual schematics of these old um, phasers like... Uh, you know, the Max 90, Max 100, the MXR phasers, the small stone phaser. And he actually takes the schematics and then models each individual component of those um, phasers and then assembles them. This is all built on Linux. If you didn't know, this is a Linux code base on this guy. And he makes these cool... Uh, I can move around here and I'll change like... He even simulates the wood board behind it. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so and you can see how I'm looking at stuff here. I have my favorites bank for when I do clinics, things that I want to show off. The category search is right here, so I can go over. There's a little button over here that's for that. So if I want to search by instrument category, if I want to look at all the brass sounds, you can see the brass showing up there, the drum sounds. So we have a kind of a cool way to navigate through the sounds that you're trying to look for. We also have this cool favorites bank, which is what I was going through. And since Sweetness is one of my favorites, so is the Wurlitzer. The tremolo that I can, I have assigned to my little 